So I've been waiting to crack these open for eight months now. I sent them in for grading in September of 2020. It's a pretty big order of PSA cards. I think there are 60 total between the four boxes. Um, I tried really hard not to let myself look at the grades online. I wanted to be surprised when I got them back. I did see one of them. It was disappointing since I thought it was a much, much better grade, but we'll see what we got. So here's the checklist of all the cards. I'm going to check these off as I open them, make sure that I got it. 68 cards total. Couldn't even remember how many I sent in. So let's get these checked off as they're done. What the hell is that? Oh, that's cute. Yeah, I forgot to put that on the box. Just kind of stuffed in. Oh, that's fine. Well, let's hope it's the right order then. Hope we don't have somebody else's cards here. All right, first one out the box. Let's see. That is a Trey Young Court Kings rookie insert. Came back as an eight. Not sure what knocked that down from a ten. Looked pretty pristine to me, straight out of the pack into the top loader that I shipped it in in. But I'll take an eight. That's fine. And with the uh, playoffs starting tonight for the Hawks, this is actually a pretty nice time to grab that. If they advance, that'll probably easily pay for itself. Next one, Luka Doncic rookie card. This is, I believe, one of the, the on-card jerseys. Nope, straight rookie. Came back as a 9. That's a Panini Chronicles 9 from 2019. Oh, hey, helps by putting him in the actual camera. There we go. And there's the uh, Trey Young from the Court Kings Acetate insert. Oh yeah, I gotta check these off. Uh, 2019. Nope, that's not that. It is. Oh, screw it. I'll check them off later. <laughs> That's going to take forever. Too many cards to go through. Next one. Uh, Raekwon Davis. Rookie card. I believe this is an autograph. Yeah. Came back as an 8. Hoping that's got some value with either Dolphins fans or Alabama football fans. It is numbered to 99. It's a red elite. It's number 21 of 99. Pretty nice autograph on there, too. Another Trey Young rookie card. This is a Court Vision. I believe this is off the status set from 2018, 2019, so it should be a rookie. That's a perfect 10. That's a perfect 10 insert, Trey Young. That's going to cover the cost of at least four or five of these cards easily. Um, it's a really nice looking card. A little bit of shine to it. I like the color on that too. And that's a perfect 10. So that card right there is well worth the investment. It's a John Morant rookie card that I pulled earlier this year. Uh, this is out of the 2019 Contender Series, I believe. And that came back as a 9. I'll take it. It's a game day ticket. It's uh, technically considered an insert, I think, from the Contender Series. So anything 9 or 10 in that range is going to be valuable and certainly worth the cost of the grade. Zion Williamson, same set. Another rookie card, 2019 Panini Contenders. I'm looking at the back of this and I can already see a nick on the back of this in a corner that I didn't notice. So I'm guessing this is not a 10. Probably an 8, maybe a 9. That's a 9. There we go. So again, another card that will easily pay for itself. Zion's still running really hot right now. It's the Jason Tatum Emerging Artist Rookie Card of the 2018 Court Kings series. I was really surprised when I pulled this card, but I was really happy about it because he was not, excuse me, it's not a rookie card, it's a second year card. He was not a, uh, a chase in this set. 
So pulling this out and then having him really explode the last couple of years was a nice little find that I had in a box. Didn't realize I still had it. I'm hoping for at least an 8 on this. I do see a nick in the corner that I didn't notice. Let's see. How about a 9? Even better. So again, a really nice insert. That'll more than cover the cost of grading this card by itself. It's a Donovan Mitchell rookie card out of the 2017... I think this was the Donruss set that I opened a couple of boxes of. So Spider is in the playoffs right now. Uh, although, if I'm not mistaken, he might be out for the playoffs. I can't remember if he got injured recently. But rookie cards are always going to pull money. I'm hoping this one's at least a 9. How about a 10? Even better. Oh, it's a Panini Essential series, not the uh, Donruss series. So I actually pulled this. I was chasing, I believe this is the same series as the Jason Tatum rookies. I was chasing the Tatum rookie out of this and pulled the Donovan Mitchell instead. So that's fine by me. A um, bunch of this stuff I was able to pull back before boxes went nuts. A couple years ago I opened up about 20-25 boxes of wax from 2017-2018 series and didn't have to pay 200 bucks a box to open them, which was nice. Alright, it's so a Saquon, uh, Saquon Barkley rookie card. Or not rookie, excuse me. 2020 uh, Panini Elite. Um, I pulled this. I believe it's an insert from the series. It's just a cool looking card. And I know Saquon's got a lot of a uh, lot of fans in Penn State and the Giants. Hoping he comes back healthy this year. Really increase the value of this. And that's a ten. That's just a really cool looking card. Um, perfect ten. Always going to sell well no matter who it is. And I'm really happy that came back with that grade. That's awesome. There's a couple of cards in these boxes that are. Much, much older. I'm talking 40s, 50s, 60s. Those are the ones that I can't wait to get to. Because uh, anything over a 5 in those series is going to be probably well worth its weight. And, well, dollars, hopefully. Um, Zion Williamson, 2019-2020 Panini Chronicles rookie. So again, pretty much any Zion that I pulled out of the 2019 series I've had graded. Um, his name is valuable alone. Um, anything that comes back as a 9 or a 10. It's got a lot of value to it. I've already sold a few of these off eBay. They more than paid for the cost of the grading, which was nice. Uh, this one is a rookie in the Chronicle set. Chronicles is a little bit lower, um, lower rated of the Panini sets, but there's no such thing as a bad set right now. And that's a nine. Again, another nice looking card. Pretty basic rookie card there. Nothing special, no insert on it, but it's a really solid looking card. I like the way it looks. Um, so I'm happy it's a nine. That'll that'll pay for itself. And the last one in this box, that's oh, Kobe Bryant. All right, so this was coming out of the 2018-19 Panini Thread Series. So um, Kobe's one of those names that they continued to make cards even after he retired. Um, a lot of times they were, you know, uh, stars of the game or Hall of Famers, things like that. Obviously, he just made the Hall of Fame. Um, I think it was just last week that he got uh, inducted. So um, anything with Kobe's name on it is still selling like crazy right now. I had an autograph that uh, I pulled out of a box of Panini Momentum from 2013 that I had graded in my first batch last year. Um, that one sold in just a couple of days on eBay. Um, it, it more than paid for itself, which was fantastic. So uh, this one I'm hoping for about a 9. If I remember correctly, this is a shiny card on the front. Um, so I'm hoping that uh, it's got some good quality and I got a decent grade on it. It's a 9. All right, and there's the shine on it. So this is a Dazzle insert. It's a, a parallel set um, to the main... Panini thread set, so this will carry a little bit extra value with it just because of that insert and the dazzle on it. So that's great. That's a fantastic first box. I have two eights, and everything else is a nine or a ten. That is way, way better than I could have ever hoped for. Let's guess I chose the right cards this time. No random sixes in there. I was so disappointed with my first batch when I got it back. I got some of the cards back, and I thought, what the hell was I thinking? Why did I bother grading that? I can see it's got a nick on it or a dent or something like that, but I was so excited to get things graded again. I hadn't done it in 10-plus years. I just kind of grabbed some out of the box and shipped them in. So, yeah, these are going to be in here tight. And this is the old stuff. I'm going to wait on it. So, no, this is still all newer stuff. So, I'm going to just pull these and stack them upside down so I can't see them. All right, so the first one right off the back here is Trey Young. This is 2018-2019, so it's going to be a rookie out of the Thread series from Panini. So Trey Young, rookie, again, carries a lot of value. He's still a star in the game. And uh, I'm going to try to get it listed pretty quickly, though, because as much as he's a star right now, I don't know how long he's going to 
carry value as more younger players come into the game. Unfortunately, playing in Atlanta, he's not going to get the same kind of treatment that a lot of other guys get. But I'll take a 9. Oh, it's next wave too. I didn't realize that. So the next wave is going to have a little bit extra value. It's a subset within the main set. Um, I got a Luca from here too. It's in the pile somewhere. Um, that I'm hoping came back as a 9 or a 10. That'll be nice though. That'll sell well. All right, now we're going to get to a couple of cards I shipped in just because they were uh, serial numbered and short printed. So, for example, a Rui Hachimura. Um, not exactly a big star, but it's a rookie card out of the Panini Illusion set from 1920. And if I remember correctly, it is a ruby, so it is uh, numbered to 99. So let's see what we came up with. First of all, it's a grade 9. That's nice. It's actually numbered to 199. Number 19 of 199, which is nice. Pretty sweet looking card. Um, I sent in a few of these. I cracked open a lot of wax from that series uh, late last year. Uh, pulled out a couple of nice rubies. I see another one right next to it here in my pile. So uh, I don't know what kind of value it's going to have or if he's got enough fans down out in the NBA. But hopefully I can at least recoup the cost of grading that one. So Jimmy Butler, obviously a bigger name in the NBA. 2019-2020 Panini Illusions. Nice looking card. Another ruby, so it's insert to 199. And that's also a 9, and it was number 112 of 199. So, much bigger name. That one will certainly sell. That's nice. Alright, now we're getting into some of the more some more of the stars here. So I got a Luca 2019-2020 Panini Contenders. I think this was an insert, if I remember correctly. And it's a Gem 10, so I can't argue with that. Uh, this is not the blue text one. I do have a blue text one that's in here as well. So that's a uh, parallel to the main set. But, any kind of Luca. PSA 10 is valuable. All right, Jason Tatum, Panini Status. This is a Jason Tatum rookie card from the Status series. I cracked open a lot of 2017 Status. I couldn't understand why it was so cheap when I bought it a couple years ago. Um, then I remember that the, there weren't a ton of rookies coming out of that class initially that people were really excited about. Obviously, Tatum turned into the, the star of the class so far. So let's see if this came back as a 9 or better. Oh, how about a 10? And it's an insert, too. That's right, rookie credentials. So this is a, a parallel. I'm sorry, not a parallel. It's an insert to 199. It's number 33. Nice. Got a little Larry Bird connection there. That's fantastic. I'm sure I'll find a Celtics fan who will understand that and will enjoy that one. So Jason Tatum, 10 rookie. And it's a rookie blue. So it's the insert. I uh, can't argue with that. That's That might pay for, if I get lucky, that might pay for the entire grading. That one's going to go over here. All right, so I got another Luca. This is from 2019 Illusions. If I remember, this is just a base card. I just like the way it looked. It might be an emerald refractor, uh, but it's pretty straightforward. Not a rookie, but it's second year. Nope, just a straightforward Luca PSA nine. So this one, I'll, I'll be lucky if this one pays for itself. Um, in retrospect, I got a little excited, thinking I could get some of these back quickly while the market was still incredibly hot last year, and Luca stuff was out of out of the out of this world in terms of value. Um, still going to be worth money. It's a second year card. It's a nice looking card. But I don't know if I'm going to get my money back on that grade. Next one here is LeBron James Insert from 2019 Illusions. Um, this was uh, with the Lakers. And it's a PSA 9. It's nice. Nice looking card. Good color. Shiny. And it's LeBron. You can't go wrong. This was the card I was really happy to pull out of that set, the Panini Illusion Zion Williamson Rookie. Obviously, this is going to be the, the Chase Rookie in the entire set. I did not pull a John Morant out of the base set. I did pull an insert. It's actually the next one in the pile here. I got really excited when I opened these boxes because the very last box that I opened, uh, there was an autograph in it, and it was a rookie, and it was from Memphis, and I almost lost my mind, and it wasn't actually John Morant. It was whoever their other rookie was last year. I don't even remember his name. But anyways, this is the Zion Williamson rookie, hoping for a 9, and yeah, it came back as an 8. Alright, it's still going to be valuable, it still should more than pay for itself, but it's not going to be top of the line stuff, that's too bad. I'm not really sure, I see a small nick in this top left corner here that might have uh, devalued a little bit. Ooh! Oh yeah, there's a whole mark right on the corner there. I thought that was actually part of the picture, but now in looking at it with the refractor and the uh, the shiny, it's not. Is that, is a Almost like a scratch on the card. Damn, didn't notice that when I sent it in. That's too bad. All right, so here is that John ja Morant insert out of that Panini Illusion series from last year. Um, it's a two-piece with De'Aaron Fox, obviously another young star in the NBA, which is nice. Um, so two-on-one card, and it's a nine, even better. 
So John Morant, De'Aaron Fox, that's kind of that's going to be nice. That'll probably sell pretty well. I sent in a couple of older NBA cards too. This is Kyrie Irving rookie card from 2012, Panini Brilliance series, I believe. I think it's a Starburst insert, so it's a parallel to the main set. It's not serial numbered or anything, but it is a parallel. And if I remember correctly, this is a base card. Um, 2012 Panini. They combined 2011 and 2012, so you had all the rookies from the 2011 class, which is basically Anthony Davis and nobody else that mattered, and the 2012 class, which was Kyrie, Kawhi Leonard, you'll see him next, and um, there was a third one in 2012, and I'm blanking on who it was, but those were the, uh, Draymond Green was in that class, I believe, so there's a lot of a lot of names in that 2012 series, because you get the combined, um, combined uh, series, and it's a nine, I'll take it, it's probably... Yeah, it'll probably come back and get me double what it cost me to get it graded, so that's fine. Kawhi Leonard right behind it. I already had one of these cards graded in my first batch. I had it go in. It came back as a 10, which was fantastic. Um, ooh, that's got some big marks on the back of it. I never noticed those. I'll bet that devalued it. Anyways, this is a another one of the uh, Starburst. This is uh, an insert, though, from that 2012-2013 Panini Brilliance. It's the... Uh, num uh, Team Tomorrow insert series. The first one of these that I had graded came back as a 10 and it sold almost immediately off of eBay when I listed it up there. This one's also a 10. That's fine by me. I don't know why they wouldn't say this was a Starburst. This is definitely a Starburst. You can see the Starburst along the top here and that's how it'll be marketed. Uh, that's, a, that's a mistake by the PSA folks. Um, I already had the exact same card graded and it was graded as a Starburst. So this will be nice. This will pay for a few of these gradings. That's who the other one was in the 2012 series, Dame Lillard. So Damian Lillard, this is a 2012 just base Panini set rookie card. Um, it's got a couple of marks across the top here, so I'll probably be lucky to see a 9 on this, but his stuff is still selling really well, which is great. And it's a 9, perfect. So this is a, just the base rookie series. from Oh, sorry, Panini Prestige, not Panini Base. Uh, rookie cards from that Prestige series, but that's a nice looking card. That'll probably bring me maybe, maybe a couple hundred bucks on that, which would be awesome. All right, now we get to the reason I started sending these cards in, because Giannis' cards went off the chart last year with his second MVP season. I already had the Prism card graded and got it back as a 9. That sold beautifully on eBay. That card paid for both sets of grading that I've done, so everything on top of that is just gravy. Um, I found this in a box, and I was ecstatic that I found this, because I was about to sell the entire box of cards for 50 bucks. And then I remembered, hey, this is the 2013-2014 Panini. I'll bet I've got a Giannis laying around in there because nobody knew who he was when he came out. And I did, so I pulled it. And it's an eight and a half. It'll still sell. Um, it's still, yeah, that that might not break a hundred bucks on eBay, but it'll still sell. That's too bad. It's only an eight and a half. These are tough to get in good shape because the foil on the bottom here rubs off really easily. And I can see a couple of spots where it's come off on the 14. Um, that's all right. I'll take it. No complaints on that. All right, this is a Luca from 28 2019. I've actually got two of these here. Uh, it's the same card. These are technically considered a subset of the main set. It's just, it's no picture of Luca. It's actually a, just a drawing of a Mavericks jersey. Um, but these are considered rookie cards, which is great. I believe they have the RC in the corner from Panini from Threads. Oof, a seven. I don't know what happened there. You know, I had a seven and a seven and an eight. That's no good. Um, I don't know what could have possibly caused this to be a 7. There is nothing wrong with this card. Well, I say that. What the hell is that? That looks like purple dust that got on it. I'm going to have to go back and look at some of my scans of these cards because that does not look like something I would have sent in. I'd be curious to see. I take pictures of all of these before I send them in and scan them. I'd be curious to see if that got put onto the card by somebody who was grading it because that is something I would not have missed. That's disappointing. They'll still sell, but a 7 and an 8 aren't going to sell that great. I've got a pile of Luca rookies. I might just batch them all up and try to sell them all together. Speaking of, here's another one. This is 2018-2019 Panini Threads, Luca Straight Rookie. Again, I've got two of these here. Um, these are both in decent shape on the back. They both have the same general nicks up in the top here, but I don't know if those are enough to devalue them. Hoping for 8s are better. 9 and 9, even better. So these are the next wave, the parallels. I'm sorry, the uh, subsets within the main set. So um, these are these are both nice. These will sell very well. 
two more Lucas. Oh, three more Lucas. Jeez, I sent a lot of Luca in. He was ridiculously hot when I sent in this whole batch back in September of 2020. Um, one of these is blue text. It's considered a uh, parallel on the insert. The rest of these came out of the 2019 Panini Contenders Draft Pick series. I believe these are all rookies, but I'm not sure until I flip them. Eight, nine, and nine on the blue text insert. That's nice. Yep, so these are uh, from the Draft Pick series. I've got the draft ticket and then the season ticket. You can see the insert and the blue text, which is really nice. Oh, jeez. Come on, PSA. That's crooked as hell when you put that in there. Damn. Sorry, I'll take it, and it'll sell. I have to go back through this pile that's going on over here, as you can see it, and figure out which of those are definitely going to sell quickly and which I might have to batch up to move as a group. Still looking for the box of older stuff. And when I say older, like I said, 50s, 60s, old, old baseball and basketball. All right, I see a... 96 and a 58, so we're going to hold off of that one. Let's see what's in this box next. Okay. 96. Okay, so this has got some more from 2020, so we'll start from this and we'll work back to the other box because they'll work right into each other. It's the same card. I think I sent in six copies of it. So the first one right off the batch, Joe Burrow rookie card. Grabbed a couple of boxes of uh, Panini... Rookies at uh, Panini Football when the season started last year. Um, pulled the Burrow out immediately. I don't think I pulled any Tua's. I have a few Justin Herberts before anyone realized how good he was going to be. So if I do another batch with PSA, those will definitely go in. Um, I'm actually hoping he might sneak into MVP conversation this year. Burrow obviously was a name out of that um, series. And it's a 9, so that's nice. There will be a Bengals or LSU fan who will like that. That will sell. That will easily cover its cost. I found this in a box, and I forgot I had this card. It's actually a Clay Thompson rookie from 2012, but I believe it's an autograph. I can't remember offhand. I'm going to have to flip it to find out. But this is from 2012-2013 Panini Elite. Uh, I cracked a bunch of this stuff back in the day um, when the market was way down, and you could get this stuff on eBay for just barely over retail cost, which was nice. Um, I opened an awful lot of stuff in 2012, both NBA and NFL, and that's where a lot of my current collection is from. It's not uh, an autograph, it is a uh, short print though. It's 27 of 89, and it's an eight. So it's also a die cut, so it makes it a little bit tougher to get a 10 on those. It's got more corners to work with, obviously. It's got six corners on here because of that curve, but still an eight's perfectly fine. Clay Thompson's still a big name in the NBA. Hopefully he comes back healthy, and that'll be worth something. So then Anthony Davis from 2014. Holy crap, did I send in that many? No, I didn't, okay. <laughs> Anthony Davis, this is an insert from 2014 from Panini. I do not remember the series. I want to say it's Prestige. Um, but this was, I believe, his second year. But this was an insert card. It's a uh, short print um, to 99. It's only coming back as a 7. That's disappointing. That's probably not going to be even worth listing, unfortunately. Um, I thought it was in better shape than that. I don't usually send in anything unless it's older that I don't think is going to get at least an 8 for me. Um, I'm guessing there's something on the corner or maybe a mark on there. But again, it's got that dark foil that's hard to keep on here. Anyways, this is a, a parallel insert. It's called a bonus shot, and then it's blue text. So it's number 3 of 99, which is just kind of a nice number. Um, still probably worth something. Davis has enough big fans out there, especially now with the move to L.A. All right, so there are a bunch of this next card. I'm going to put that one aside because I'm going to try to find the rest of them. Hold on. I know I've got at least one more at the bottom of this pile. I saw it. Oh, I forgot those were in there. That's going to be great. Yeah, I can't wait to see some of those. There's the rest of them. Okay. So those are all Kobe rookie cards from Upper Deck from 96. I opened a ridiculous amount of that stuff back in the 90s when it was fresh. Here's another Burrow rookie. I knew I had two out of there. I don't know why they didn't come back together. But this one came back as a 9 also, which is nice. That'll certainly help out uh, with the cost here and should easily cover its cost. All right, so now we're back into some of those Panini Threads cards. So, again, this is from 2018, long after Kobe had retired, but uh, still got a couple of these here with that. Uh, I don't think it's Next Wave. I think it's something else as the insert. And I got an 8 and a 10, so that's nice. The, the 10, this is perfect. Um, that'll, that'll probably get me at least 100, if not more, off of eBay. This one hopefully will pull 50 and, uh, and more than cover the cost of the grading. 
I should put all the 10s aside. I think I've only seen three or four 10s so far, so. Uh, one of these was a 10. Yeah, that, that Jason Tatum, I can't wait to see what that goes for. That's that's going to be a really nice, really nice paycheck. Oh, I did pull a John Morant straight out of that set. Oh, damn, I pulled two. Wow, I don't remember pulling either one of these. Great. Well, 2019-2020 Panini Illusions, John Morant base set. These are both rookie cards. Um, hoping for nines or better. Oof, two eights. Well, on the plus side, John Morant's a big enough name, and his team's advancing in the playoffs, which is nice. So if I can get these up on eBay probably within the next couple of days, I'm sure I'll pull some bids off of these, and they'll more than cover the cost of the grade, even if it's only an eight. Another Kawhi Leonard out of that 2012-2013 Brilliance. This is the straight set rookie card, so just a basic Kawhi rookie. I don't think he had a whole lot of rookies printed that year. I've only seen a few of them. I know Panini had all the different sets out still then, um, but I haven't seen a ton of those. I think some of them might have been sendaways, but they are uh, still nice when you pull them, and they still carry a lot of value, and especially when they're a 9 and a 10. That's, that's pretty fantastic. So um, that 10 is going to that's gonna help out a lot, especially with the Clippers advance. Let's go over into the they'll pay for themselves pile. All right, so now we're getting into a little bit of the older NBA stuff. Um, I'm going to skip over a couple of those and pull this Kobe out because this one I was really interested to see. This is a really weird die cut out of the 19, 1999? Yeah, 1999 top series. So it was only the second or third year that Kobe had cards produced. Um, it's It's got a lot of different die cuts in it. It's got some slats. You can kind of see my fingers behind the behind the card here. It's got a couple of diamonds up top here and all, all off to the side here. It's uh, basically an all-star card for um, Kobe Bryant here from the Lakers. Um, 99 was a weird year. It's, you know, kind of the end of the, well, obviously it was the end of the 90s, but it was the end of the rush of cards where they were, you know, producing just an unbelievable amount of cards. It's not serial numbered. I don't know if anything was serial in that series, um, but if it's coming back as a 9 or a 10, it'll be worth some value to it. Take a nine, that's fine. Look at Kobe with the hair, damn. Um, so yeah, that'll that'll be nice. That'll that'll fetch a nice nice value on eBay. A little bit of shine to it. It's not quite as nice as the Topps Chrome series from those years, but still a nice looking card. All right, so a couple of older ones here. These are old Jordans. I already sold a bunch of Jordan stuff that I had from the 80s. This is 1989 All Star sticker. You don't see a lot of these stickers still in good shape because, frankly, as kids, we used to peel them and stick them on things. I still have a binder somewhere covered in these stickers, but I had two of these. Um, this is 8990 Fleer, so before Penny bought the Fleer company, um, these stickers were all the all-stars. That's how they did them. It was one per pack back in the day. I opened up a lot of these packs when I used to work in a baseball card shop as a kid. Um, the guy who ran the store used to pay me in packs because I was only seven or eight years old, so he couldn't actually pay me. Six is a little bit disappointing. I don't know what caused that to be a six. I don't think I've ever gotten a six back from them. So that's that's really disappointing. I don't know what did that. Um, that'll have to get batched up with something else. But a nine on a sticker is pretty nice. Really, what the... Oh, I, I know why this is a nine. Yeah, look at that. They're both off-center. So if you look at the picture here, you can see how it's different, the spacing here. Both these cards are completely off-center. That's And the stars in the corners are way, way shifted. That's crazy how far off those are. I wonder if these maybe came off the same same production run, and you know that's that's where they got off center. That's crazy. Um, so a six is disappointing, but a nine, you know, this this might cover its cost. That'll 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 do well. This is also from eighty nine ninety, I think. Yeah, eighty nine ninety Fleer, just a Jordan of uh, the base set. They didn't have inserts in eighty nine. So the insert, this was the closest thing to an insert, was a, an all-star sticker. Um, so 8990 Fleer base set Jordan. Uh, there's a couple of nice rookies in this set. I think I've got a Rodman lying around. I believe it's the same set. Maybe it's 90. I can't remember. Um, but this is a nice-looking card, and I'm hoping it's good grade. It looks like it's in good shape on the back. 8, I'll take it. It's a nice-looking card there. Anything with Jordan's name on it still carries a ton of value. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I sold some from 88 last year. I sold a couple things from 85 last year. So this is nice. All right, so the pile here, and there's at least one in this last box. I'm just going to take that pile out of that box. Oops. There we go. Yep. So I believe those are all the ones I have for Kobe from 96. Let me see really quick. Yeah, I'll get to send it. Nope, there's more. Wow, I sent in a lot of these. So I sent these all in shortly after Kobe passed. Obviously, the thought being he's not going to have any more cards printed it's a shame but 
So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the 96 Upper Deck Kobe Rookie cards. I have more of these, but the ones that I sent in were the ones that I thought to be the best of my pile. Um, this card, along with some others, like uh, 92 Shaq Stadium Club, I think I have 30 of those. I opened a ridiculous amount of wax for those. Um, 92 Upper Deck. Uh, I've got a bunch of the Shaq rookies. I've got a bunch of the Jordans put away from that series. But I went through and pulled out the ones that I thought were in the best shape and that would be worth the most amount of money. And this is this pile here, so let's see what we've got. So we've got eight off the bat here. 18 year old Kobe looked way different. That's crazy. So eight, not fantastic, but not terrible. Not a, not a bad start. Nine, getting better. Nine, nine, another eight. Nine, nine, nine. So no tens, but I'll take six nines out of that. That's not bad. So each of those is going to sell pretty well. The eights might be a little bit tougher. I might bundle those up with something else of his and put them all together as a lot. But I'm happy with six nines out of that pile. So I believe I have two more modern day cards, and then the rest of these are all the much, much older. Yeah, okay. So two more modern day cards. The first one here is a uh, jersey card. It's got four players on it from the New Orleans Saints. It's from the 2014 Panini Prestige football series. Um, the only reason I sent this in is because it's got a Drew Brees jersey on it, and it's serial numbered, I believe, to 99. Uh, it's a super thick card. It's got a hell of a ding in the corner, which is a shame. So nine would be a best case scenario on this. It's more likely going to be a seven or an eight, maybe an eight and a half. Um, but the, jer the Breeze jersey is nice. It's also got a couple of guys that used to play for the Saints. Pierre Thomas, Marcus Colston, and Jimmy Graham. Yeah, it's a seven. Yeah, I was a little disappointed with that when I saw the nick on it. Uh, it's a pretty basic jersey for Breeze, just a, just a white swatch. It does have a nice two-tone two swatch for Jimmy Graham and a little bit of the... Saints gold on the Pierre Thomas jersey, um, but the Breeze swatch is pretty basic, but it is numbered, oh, it's numbered 25, not 99, so it's 13 of 25, so um, the the serial number is nice, uh, the seven's going to hurt the value on that, it'll cover, it'll cover its own cost, but not by a whole lot, and then this one, um, I kind of threw in there on a whim, it's Tom Brady, this is actually the only Tom Brady card I've owned, I uh, have not cracked a whole lot of football wax, and uh, I certainly didn't open a lot back in the day. I was more of a basketball and baseball card guy when I was younger. This was 2012 Panini Prime Signatures. It was a, I think it was a one-and-done set. I don't think they ever released a second series of this, or if they did, they released only one more. Um, this is not an autograph. If it was, I would have sent it in with all of the expedited shipping and had it back in a week because Brady's stuff is off the charts right now with good reason. Um, so this is a short print to 99. If I remember correctly, it's card number one in the set, which is nice. Um, these were really nice cards, super thick card stock, and I believe this is a prime proof, which is why it's serial numbered. I think it's red. It's only coming back as an eight, a little disappointing. It's number 41 out of 99. Um, I actually just looked at these. It is the prime proof we're in. I looked at these today on eBay before my shipment showed up. Um, anything in this prime proof red series to 99 is going well over 100 bucks a pop. So hopefully even, a, and none of those were graded. So hopefully even an eight will carry some value on that. So I've done the work for somebody here. I sent in the card. I got it graded. All they got to do is pay me for it. All right, now my older stuff. This card right here, uh, I looked at the grade online. It's the only one that I looked at. I was disappointed in it. Um, these are old, old, old cards. So even though these are going to come back mostly as fours, fives, and sixes, I'm thinking, um, I'm fine with that. I prefer to see sevens. Tens are unheard of for cards from 1959, for example. Um, you can see, or you can probably see, um, these cards are often miscut. So you can see how much extra white space there is at the top as opposed to the bottom. Clearly they're off color a little bit. They've faded over the years. This is 1959 Warren Spahn. Um, there are, I think, three different versions of this card. All of them have a different birth date. So there's one that says he was born in 21, which I believe is correct. There's one that says he was born in 29, and one that says he was born in 31. There wasn't a whole lot of uh, QA done with cards back in the day, so uh, a lot of times they had misprints and had to re reprint or rerun things later on. But I believe this was a PSA 4, which is a shame because I really thought this card was in better shape. Yeah, it's a 4. Um, it's a nice looking card. You know, obviously Warren Spawn, Hall of Famer. So um, anything from this age is probably going to get bundled up and I'm going to try and sell it as a lot. Um, I've got some, I've got a Mickey Mantle in here somewhere. I've got a Hank Aaron in here somewhere, Ted Williams. Um, so I'm hoping I can get just kind of throw a Hall of Fame lot together and see what I can do with that. I'm going to skip the basketball stuff for a minute here because it's all from one series. 
There we go. Let's go back to the baseball. All right, so this one I don't know the grade on yet. Again, same series, 1959 tops. It's got a small ding in the corner down here. Um, this was Johnny Padres and Don Drysdale, along with someone that I don't know on there uh, from the Dodgers. Um, but this is uh, it's, it's a three-player card. Um, and they did a lot of these back in the uh, late 50s, early 60s, where they would combine players and put them together, have them kind of stand out front by home plate and strike a pose and get on the, get on the card. That's also a four. That's kind of a shame. Um, the centering is what kills a lot of these. Obviously, that nick in the corner doesn't help me. But you can see how off-center it is at the bottom versus the top. I really thought these were going to be in better shape. Um, the fading, I think, probably got me a little bit too. Um, for the most part, the cards are in good shape, I think. But the uh, the slight nicks in the corners aren't going to help. So I was hoping to see some sixes out of these. Uh, I might have to settle for fives and fours. So this right here, I can see how off-center this is. It's clearly been miscut. There's almost no white space at the top of the card. At the bottom of the card, it's you know got a, a big, big gap. Same thing left and right. Very little on the left, ton on the right. Um, but this is a, a Mickey Mantle Hank Aaron, so just the names alone. If this, if this was at least a four, this is going to be extremely valuable. That's a three. Oh, that's disappointing. So Nick in the top corner again. Um, that's really disappointing. I, I was thinking this was going to be at least a four. Um, that's kind of a shame. Nice looking card. You know, put Mantle and Aaron on their names alone. And again, I've done the work for somebody and had it graded. So um, hopefully, again, when I batch these all up, we'll, uh, we'll get the value back. Obviously, I'm going to get more than 20 bucks for this card. But I was hoping to get a couple thousand for it. All right, this is a team checklist from the, ooh, I forgot what year this is. I want to say it's the 52. Nope, it's got to be after that because I got 57 on here. So let's call it 57 Brooklyn Dodgers. I'll see when I flip it. It's either 57 or 58. It's a team checklist. Obviously, the big name on here is Jackie Robinson, but Duke Snyder, Sandy Koufax. You can, I don't know if you can see the names that are written on there. Don Drysdale. Um, there's quite a few Hall of Famers on this card. It's a team picture, so it's you know it's just a bunch of guys that they took a picture of from about 50 feet away. You can probably barely make out faces, um, but it is kind of cool to have all these on one card. That's a two. Yeah. Oops, upside down. So, again, that's probably not a ton of value, but for the age, and that card's almost 55 years old now, so... And I think this is the last of the baseball cards I sent in. So this is Ted Williams, Ted Glazewski, another one of those paired cards. You can see how off-center it is. Uh, it's shifted way to the left. Top and bottom, not too bad. Still a little bit off, but not terrible. And it came back as a five. Interestingly enough, out of all the cards that I sent in for the older cards, I thought this one was in the worst shape. So I'll happily take that. Um, you can't really see Ted Klazuski's face, but Ted Williams is obviously the, the star on the card anyways. And then the last pile that I have here, these are all basketball cards from 1949? No, 51. I can't remember. It's the second year the basketball cards were ever produced, mass produced, and sold. Um, the big name in this series is a Bill Russell rookie card. I do not have that. I do have a couple of rookie cards uh, in this series that had some value even without grading. Um, interesting story on this. When I was younger, I took this pile of cards. There were two more cards in this pile. I think there are nine right now. Um, I took this pile to a card show and showed them to a couple of dealers and asked them for some feedback on what they thought it was worth. And one of the dealers swiped two of the cards from me. And I didn't notice it until after when I got back in my friend's car. I was too young to drive. I think I was 14 at the time. And um, he swiped two of the cards. He took them and just dropped them on, on his lap under the price guy that he was looking at. And I never noticed it. And they were valuable cards. And I'm sure he knew they were valuable. Um, so I lost two of the cards that I had in this set. And obviously, when I went back in and said, hey, you swiped two cards, he laughed at me and said, prove it. So those are gone. But the ones I do have are still here. And I decided finally to send them all in. Um, not a ton of names from what I have here, again, these cards are 60 plus years old. I think it's 5253 is the actual series, um, now that I'm rethinking about it. So they're almost 60 years old on these cards. So the first one up is Paul Arizon. Um, all of these cards I'm expecting to be no better than a five, with the exception of maybe one. So that's a four. And you've probably seen this design on some of the pictures. If you, if you follow sports cards, you've certainly seen the Bill Russell um, at some point in time, that's one of the gold standards for old basketball cards. 
So, oh, it's 50, 57 tops. Oh, I didn't know it's that reason. Okay, so it's 45 years. No, 55. Eh, I don't want to do math. 55 years old. Next up is Paul Seymour. That's a four. One of the cards in this set, it's very hard to find in good coloring, so I'm hoping that came back as a good grade. Next up is Ed, Con Ed Conlon. Gives you an idea of how old these are. He played for the Syracuse Nationals, which I don't even know who they became. That's a five. That's fine. Decent shape. You know, you didn't get a lot of action shots in this series. A lot of these guys have got their action shots, which is nice. Jack Coleman from the St. Louis Hawks. That's a five. Mid Park from the St. Louis Hawks. That's probably a four, maybe less. I can see Nick's on it. That's a five. Wow. All right. I guess it's by comparison. So the last three here are the ones that I think might have some actual value to them individually if I don't sell them all, all as a series. The first one is the card that's hardest to find with good coloring because it had, um, I believe it has a black background behind his head, Neil Johnston. And then after that, I've got uh, Red Kerr and Maurice Stokes. I believe those are both considered rookie cards, and they're, they had some value even without grading. So this one is Neil Johnston from the Philadelphia Warriors. If I remember correctly, like I said, there's a black background behind his head. It's not an action shot. It's a still shot. Um, but it's really hard to find this in decent shape because of that black background. And there it is, and it's a 5, so that's pretty good. Um, I'm guessing that's about as high a grade as you'll see on that card. Alright, the Red Kerr, John Kerr. Um, <laughs> I love it. So they have fun facts about the players on here, and his fun fact is he's the tallest man on the Syracuse Nationals at six foot nine. Different game. Three and a half. Oh, that's disappointing. Wow. I don't know what did that. That's that's a real shame. Well, I can see a crease on it that I didn't see before, so that's probably what did it. That's too bad. This was a card that I kept in some really thick plastic for years because I knew it had a little bit of value to it. And then finally, Maurice Stokes, also a card that I kept in a really thick plastic, um, plastic holder for years from the Cincinnati Royals. Now it's a five. Okay. So all in all, I think that's a pretty decent run from these. Nothing better than a five, but the only one worse than a four. So that's not terrible from the old basketball stuff. I'm glad that I had those done. Um, I've wondered about those for a while, what kind of grade they'd get with the age and if there was any... Um, any uh, yeah, bell curve for grading those, you know, with older stuff. So, all in all, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I didn't have as many tens come back as I expected. I think I had fewer tens than I had come back in a in an order of one third the size from last time. But uh, I am pretty happy with what I've got here. Now I have to go through it and see what I can unload quickly and uh, what needs to get up on eBay like this week.